All right, welcome back everybody. So awesome job by James so far and really excited to be here on Dev Days Live. My name is Brandon Minnick and we are going to talk a little bit about Xamarin Forms today. So first of all, who, who am I? My name is Brandon Minnick. I'm a technical solutions professional at Microsoft. So what does that mean? It means I probably have the coolest job in the world because I get to talk and hang out with developers like yourself every day and literally just talk apps. So let's talk about what app you're creating. We'll talk about architecture, MVVM. We'll talk about best practices. I love it. And let's see, if, if anybody wants to find me, I have my uh, Twitter handle here on the screen. It's at Brandon Zamarin. Pretty easy because, well, my name's Brandon and I work at Zamarin. So if you have any questions after the show, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter. Okay, so meet Xamarin Forms. So Xamarin Forms is a, a cross-platform library that allows you to build your UI in shared code. Before Xamarin Forms, there was the traditional Xamarin approach, and that was what James talked about already this morning. He did a great job showing how to create the native Android UI. And what we're going to talk about today is how do we share even more code by creating that UI once. And so with Xamarin Forms, we can do that. Now, Xamarin Forms is a pretty cool tool. It actually it started out um, just as an idea by Jason Smith, our creator of Xamarin Forms, incredibly smart guy. He was working one day and realized, hey, you know, a lot of these platforms, iOS, Android, Windows, they all have similar UI. They all have buttons, they all have labels, they all have text boxes or what we like to call entries. And so why can't we create a abstraction layer that allows us to create that UI once and then turn that into the native control? So that's what we do here in Xamarin Forms. Uh, we allow you to create your UI and then we actually translate that Xamarin Forms code into the platform specific API. So if you create a UI in Xamarin Forms and you want to create a button and we're on iOS, when you compile that, we're going to compile that down into a UI button and give you that native control so you still get great performance and you still have that native look and feel that our users have come to love from iOS and Android and Windows. And so when it was starting out, this was really just meant to be a uh, proof of concept tool. It was something to where if your boss came to you and said, we need to build an app, you got a week to do it, and by the way, it's got to work on iOS, Android, and Windows. That's an incredibly challenging task for even the most experienced developers. But with Xamarin Forms, we could easily create that proof of concept app and have something up and running to, make, to show your boss on Monday. And that's kind of how it started out, and we were really lucky. We, we got a lot of involvement with the developer community. They really loved Xamarin Forms and ran with it. So, over the years, we've taken it from this simple proof of concept tool into a really robust platform that you can use to make production apps. And even myself, I have my uh, own app on the App Store in the iOS, Android, and Windows Store. And I made that with Xamarin Forms, and it works great. All right, so Xamarin Forms. Xamarin Forms is open source. This is really, really cool. So back in the day, Xamarin Forms wasn't open source. This was announced at uh, earlier this year, and what this allows you to do is actually dig into Xamarin Forms and see what's going on. So, like I mentioned, I talked a lot with developers, and a lot of the conversations we used to have before we open sourced the platform was, well, I'm trying to do this, but Xamarin Forms does that. Why is that? And so, what we did was, I would work with them, we'd walk through it, and I'm on my side, I would look through the source code and say, oh, well, here's what's going on. Give Xamarin Forms this, and then you'll get this in return. Now you don't have to come to me anymore, although I still love talking to you. You can just go to open.xamarin.com and actually download the source code. You can add the Xamarin Forms source code right into your app. So what does that mean? That means you can actually debug down into Xamarin Forms and see what's really going on, see how it's really building that UI, and see how it's constructing that animation. And even better, if you want to, open a pull request. Submit a new feature to Xamarin Forms. We love getting these from the developer community. I can't tell you how many times I've talked with developers and said, 
who've said to me, hey, I wish Xamarin.Forms could do this, or why doesn't Xamarin.Forms have that? Well, now you can go ahead and add it yourself. And so when you submit that pull request to us, we'll review it, we'll run it through all of our litany of unit tests and UI tests to make sure it's good, and when it passes everything, it'll be in there. Crazy, crazy cool. So check it out today. Go to open.xamarin.com, fork it on GitHub, and start playing around with it. Okay. So this is the traditional approach. This is what James talked about earlier, where we have our shared C-sharp backend, and we have platform-specific code for our UIs, which is great. We can still share all of our backend logic. So let's say we want to download a file from our remote database. Well, none of that's platform-specific, so let's do that in our C-sharp backend. And this method, we were able to share code across our iOS, Android, and Windows app upwards of, we'll say 50 to 70% we could share. Now, with Xamarin Forms, we take it a step further. And at Xamarin, you'll hear the word shared code a lot because we love sharing code. It's, we love making it easier for developers to quickly build their apps and build great apps. And with Xamarin Forms, we can now share UI code. And it's not just implementing the same UI across every platform. It's actually turning that UI that we wrote in Xamarin Forms into the native control. So you get your, your, uh, your UI button on iOS, you get your Android button on Android, and so you still get the great performance and look and feel that our users have come to love. So what's included with Xamarin Forms? There's a lot, and we could spend all day talking about this, but let's, let's just hit a couple of the top bullet points here. So pages, layouts, controls, uh, I'll, I'll go through this on the next slide, but basically there are different pages you can have. So think of a, a tabbed page in an app, so kind of like your Facebook, your Instagram, that have the tabs uh, that you can navigate to the different pages. There's the master detail page that slides out from the left using the hamburger menu, or you can have a navigation where we just drill down into it and we keep pushing pages onto the navigation stack. That's all included in Xamarin Forms. And there, you can do it in XAML or in C-sharp. So we'll look at both today in the code demo and two-way data binding. So we'll get in a little bit more in MVVM a little bit later, but that allows the views to talk to the view model in MVVM. They use data binding. And we'll, we'll jump into an example, so don't worry if you haven't seen that before. Navigation. So do you want that page to push in from the side so the user can swipe left to go back? Do you want that page to pop up from the bottom? How do you want the users to navigate through your app? That's all included in Xamarin Forms. Animation APIs. These are the sugar on top of your app that makes it great. This is what's going to give you those five-star reviews, and we have it all included in Xamarin Forms. So if you want to maybe add a little animation to the button to let users know you clicked it or liked a photo, you can do that in Xamarin Forms. If you want to fade that text out from the screen to make it disappear and look really cool, that's all included. Dependency service. This gets back into MVVM, and if anybody's familiar with IOC or inversion of control, we have a dependency service built into the Xamarin Forms library. So you can actually set your bindings there. You can uh, use the uh, dependency service in Xamarin Forms to access platform-specific code. And why that's really cool is Xamarin Forms allows you to do anything. It's not, you're not stuck in this silo that you can't get out and you're forced to make your app look like Xamarin Forms wants you to make it look. You can extend Xamarin Forms to do anything by accessing those native APIs still. And one way to do it is using the dependency service. And also the messaging center. So anybody familiar with a uh, pub sub architecture, that's also built into Xamarin Forms as well. Okay, so pages and layouts. We talked a little bit about this a minute ago, but with Xamarin Forms, this is all included. So you want to have a master detail page. You want to have that menu slide in from the side to where your users can navigate down into different pages. You can do that. You want to have tabs on the bottom for, say, your iOS app or tabs on the top for your Android app. We got that. Carousel page, so you can swipe left and swipe right, kind of Snapchat style. That's included in Xamarin Forms too. Now, layouts. Where are you going to put the controls on the screen? Where's that button going to go? Where's the label? Where's that, that entry, that text box going to live? Well, we have layouts to do that for you. So 
stack layouts, if you are using something kind of simple where maybe you just have a couple views stacked on top of each other, top to bottom, put them in a stack layout. Absolute layout. You can get a little bit more granular and say, I want to pin this to the top right of my screen, and then I'm going to pin this to the bottom, and this one's going to be in the center. Great, you can do that in the absolute layout. Relative layout, you can take that a step further and say, I'm going to pin this to the top right of the screen, and then I'm going to add this to the left of it relative to where I pinned that. Cool. We can do that. Grids, let's say you have a bunch of photos, you can put them in a grid so they're all nice and aligned with the perfect spacing in between them. Scroll views, you got content that goes off the page, put it in a scroll view and let your users scroll down for days. It's great. So the controls, we talked a little bit about why we created Xamarin Forms is because we wanted to take advantage of the common functionality that exists across platforms. So if we look at this, you'll see that there's things like buttons and labels. All of those exist across platform. And so we have that control built into Xamarin Forms. Now, if we think about this just a step further, you might ask, well, what about, uh, let's see, I'm an Android person and I want to add a floating action button. Well, floating actions buttons don't necessarily exist in the native iOS APIs. So we don't include that in Xamarin Forms, but like I said earlier, you can add and extend Xamarin Forms to do whatever you want. So we can still make that floating action button and add it to your Android app. This is one of my, my favorite slides here. It shows off our Xamarin Forms ecosystem because we talked a little earlier about how Xamarin Forms has come from this simple proof of concepting tool to a powerful, robust library that we can use to build production apps. And none of that would have been possible without the Xamarin Forms ecosystem and our, our developers and our partners. And we were really humbled by the fact that there's all these partners that build tools just for Xamarin Forms. So for example, SyncFusion, they build charts and graphs that you can add to your Xamarin Forms app. They also can, you can also add that to your iOS app or your Android app if you're not using Forms, but they also build a library just for Xamarin Forms. It's incredible. And so from the bottom of my heart, thank you to everybody in the Xamarin Forms ecosystem. It's been awesome and I can't wait to see where this ride takes us. All right, so we're about to jump into some code and let's look at this sample here just before we do to kind of get our feet wet a little bit. You'll notice right away that it is in XAML. So if you're coming from, if you're a Windows developer coming from say WPF, you'll feel right at home in Xamarin Forms. And if we look at this here, we've got about, uh, that's probably 30, 40 lines of code written in XAML, and this makes up the UI of these three apps here. And you'll notice the apps all still look and feel like the native app. So how does, how does Xamarin Forms do that? Well, let's take a look. So we have a tab page here that everything lives inside. And if we go and look at the devices, you'll notice we have tabs. On iOS, we have the tabs at the bottom, just like our users know, love, and have come to expect. Android. Xamarin Forms automatically puts those tabs at the top. Because again, this is what the, our Android users have gotten used to and this is what they've come to love. And take it a step further, Android users like to swipe left and right to go to different tabs. Xamarin Forms does that for you automatically. And likewise on Windows, we have the tabs at the top as well. So digging a little deeper, we have our stack layout in here, which is what we talked about earlier where we're just going to have a couple controls or views on the screen, stacked one on top of each other. And in that stack layout are two entries where we can enter text, so in this case, username and password. And we have a button that lets us log in. And if we look closely, we'll see that these are the native buttons and the native entries for each platform. So like on iOS, you have the beautiful rounded corners and text boxes. Android has material design, so we have our uh, shadow under the login button, our uh, username and password aren't necessarily text boxes, but more of a, a line with the shadow. And same on Windows with the flat Metro UI. It looks great, and Xamarin Forms does this all for you. So it, like I said, it turns that shared UI code, these 40 lines of code here, into that specific platform control, and allows you to still get that great performance. So we mentioned you can extend Xamarin Forms to do whatever we want. And this is an example here. So 
Let's say on iOS, we want to add some padding to the top of our app. Because if anybody's worked with iOS, you know that the top is your status bar. And that's where it says that it's the, you got the time, maybe the battery, the, the signal level. And all that's great, but we don't want to cover that up with our app. And so since that's 20 pixels high, we're going to add 20 pixel padding just to the iOS app. And here in our platform customization code, that's exactly what we're doing. So if we look at this here, you'll see that we have 20 pixels of padding on the top for iOS, but we're not including that on Android or Windows. And so that allows us to tweak just a little bit. And this is still in XAML. This is still in Xamarin Forms in our shared code. All right. So let's jump into it. Let's check out some real code in Xamarin Forms. So we have a, a sample app today. And what we're going to do is create a page in this app in XAML. Now, I've already gone ahead and added some of the business logic to it. And earlier we were talking about MVVM. So right now we're looking at my welcome view model. This is the view model or the business logic that I'm going to use for my welcome page that we'll create in just a minute. Now with MVVM, that stands for model view view model. <laughs> so the model, that's our data structure. The view, that's everything that appears on the screen that the user can interact with. And the view model is all of our business logic. So let's see how that works. So in my view model here, I've already listed a, a couple properties that I'm going to take advantage of in my view because I'm creating this welcome page. So I'm going to have, I'm going to have a text box where I can enter in my name. I'm going to have another text box where I, um, I'm actually going to challenge James in a minute. He can, he'll enter in his name. And then we'll have a submit button that allows us to launch the game. And this game is one I've made called Face Off. It's really cool. It uses Microsoft Cognitive Services to read your emotion. And so the challenge of the game is to go head to head with a friend and see who can do that emotion best. All right. So for this welcome page, I just want to collect the player's name. So I have a string here that will hold the player one name. I also have a string for player two, just like we expect. I have a Boolean. It's called is game ready. This is going to let the app know that both usernames are entered. And if we look here, this just checks to make sure neither player one nor player two is null. So make sure we entered some text there. And then a command down here called start game. And a command is just the, what the button sends when it's tapped. So this is going to be the logic that executes when I tap the start game button. Now, you'll notice here in my view model, I've implemented iNotify property changed. And all these properties have its on property changed method. So what's, what's going on here, right? This is, this is a way for the view and the view model to interact with each other without knowing anything about each other. So with the, with the view, if anything changes in the view, the way MVVM works with bindings is it just shouts out, let's say I'm a text box and somebody entered text, it says, it just shouts out, my text changed. And my view model is listening. My view model goes, oh, that's player one's text. I know what to do with that. So I'm going to update the value of player one. Likewise with the button. If the button fires on the view because the user tapped it, it's just going to shout out, somebody tapped me. And then the view model is listening, and it picks it up and runs with the command to start the game. And so the, true, the opposite is also true. So on property changed, if we change something in our business logic, let's say we are downloading a bunch of data from a remote database and populating that into a list in our app. Well, that's the view model doing that. We got to let the view know to update. So on property change allows us to do that. And so that is the view model shouting out, hey, I changed something in, say, player one. And the view goes, OK, great. I know where to put that. I'll put that in the player one entry. So this is kind of the, the very basics of MVVM. And the reason that's so great is now what I can do is, let's say, let's say iOS comes out with, a, with an update, right? Like they did in iOS 7, where they changed from the skeuomorphic design to the flat design. Now, if we used MVVM, it's super easy to rip out the old view, replace it with the new flat UI that we want to implement, and then we're done. As long as we wire up these bindings just like we had them before, 
that's it. So as long as our business logic isn't coupled in tightly with our views, it makes it really easy to say update the UI like that. Or maybe we want to change our backend, right? We're going to switch to a remote Azure database instead of a local database on the phone. Well, we can do all that without changing the view. And again, as long as we wire up the bindings, we're good. All right, so let's jump into some XAML code here and we'll see just how these bindings work. So right now, I just have a, I just have a blank page in front of me. And so when, when I kind of picture this welcome page, in my mind, I see a, uh, an entry, so where player one can enter their name. I see right below that a, another entry where player two can enter their name. And then right below that, I see a button that we can tap on to start the game. So let's do just that. Because they're all going to be stacked one on top of each other, we can put them in a stack layout. And the first thing we're going to do is add a label. And this label is going to have text that says player one. To let the player one know this is where to enter your name. And below that, we need an entry. And so this entries text is where our MVVM bindings come in. So I'm going to create a binding. And I'm going to jump back to my view model, grab this right here, and paste it in. And what I've just done is told my view, my welcome page, to tie any activity to the text of this entry to the player one property of my view model. So when I start to update my entry text, it's going to shout out and let me know, or let the view model know something's changed. And now, I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this over here for player two. And what else do we need? We need a button. So we got to be able to tap on something. So this button is going to have, let's make it nice little formatting here. So let's say the button's going to say start game. That way the user knows what to expect when they tap on it. And the command is also going to be a binding. So the command is what the what executes when you tap the button. So it, it executes this start game command. So I'm going to bring this binding in here. And then what else do we want to do? Oh, we have that Boolean that checks to make sure the game's ready to load. So let's say is enabled and add a binding back to that bool. So let's grab is game ready. That way the user can accidentally start the game without adding their names first. OK, so this looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and run it. And while that's building, I'm going to add a breakpoint here on the setter of player two and also the getter for is game ready. And I've got my Android emulator right here. Looks like we are loading. So let's just give that a minute to load. So, oh, there we go. So here's the app running on Android. All right, so we already hit our breakpoint. So as the view is building, it wants to make sure that we check if the game is ready. And that's what's happening here. So right away, we're checking to see if player one or player two is null, which they are. So we're going to return a false. And I'm going to go ahead and continue here. And there we go. This is what we just created in XAML. So if I flip back over here, this is just a couple lines of code, looks about 10 lines of code. And now we can enter in our player one name. So I can put in, whoop, getting a little ahead of myself there. We hit the, we hit the break point again. So we can see now that none of this logic exists in our view. It's all in our view model, but using bindings in MVVM, we're able to wire up the logic to the views. So let's go ahead and continue that. It looks like the is game ready property is working. And we'll go ahead and say wait because that was me that paused the action in the app. And I'll continue saying, Brandon, I won't call him up just yet, but oh, got ahead of myself again. So here's the breakpoint we just hit in our view model again for player two. So right now, it, the view shouted out, somebody changed text in the player two entry, and our view model caught that and said, I know what to do. So it's going to update our player two value. Let's just continue that and also call on property changed to notify that player two's change and also is game ready have changed. So let's say wait again so we can jump back in. And 
Looks like everything's working. Start game. Cool. And there's the game. So we're in. Now, the game asks for me and James to take a photo. We'll, we'll do that in just a minute, but there's something I want to do first because, you know, the, the UI we just made, it, it looks good. It does. But I think we can make it better. So let me, let me bring this up because something I noticed was it needs what we call a little breathing room. And so you'll notice at the top, the, the text and the entries are really shoved against the top. So let's go back to our XAML, and instead of putting the stack layout at the top of the page, I'm going to move it, and let's see, vertical options, center. So I'm going to put it in the center of the page. And then what I also want to do is add a little padding. So I'm going to put a 20 pixel padding all the way around this stack layout to bring it in from the edges a little bit. Like I said, give it a little breathing room. I think that'll be good. Okay. Why don't I do this? We can see both in real time. Now, the, the label, those are a little small. So let's make that a little bigger. And I'm going to say uh, font size here. And we say let's bump it up to 24. And that should be pretty good. Let's bump up the font size of the second label before we forget. And that'll be 24 as well. And let's see, for the button, I've actually already created a, my own button. I called it a, a bounce button. So if I say uh, bounce button here, now what we'll get is a button that animates when the user taps it. It'll actually bounce a little bit. And it also has a little bit of formatting to look like the rest of the buttons in the app. And you know what? One thing that I always like when I see in apps is in these entries, let's add a placeholder to let the, know, let the user know what to do here. So let's say enter name. That sounds good. And let's do the same thing down here. Enter name. All right, so we have our bounce button. Oh, and you know what? Since we're on the topic of breathing room, let's add, this is going to add 20 pixels of margin in between the button and that last entry on the page to just give it a little bit more breathing room. So let's go ahead and run this now. OK, so while that's building, I saw we have a couple questions coming in. Um, question about performance using Xamarin Forms instead of using native. Xamarin Forms has come a long way. If, if you were with us years ago when we first created it, it was a little slower than using native. Now it's almost negligible. There may be a couple times where you bump up against the limits of what Xamarin Forms can do, but for most use cases, you wouldn't even know the difference. All right, so it looks like our game's launching. Oh man, much better, much better. So let's see, we have the enter name placeholder, so I can put in Brandon and James, and when I click start game, get the little bounce animation. Cool. All right, so I'll tell you what. Um, James, why don't you come back up for just a second, because I am going to challenge you to a face-off. Uh -oh. all, right. <laughs> all right, so the first thing you'll notice is we are... This is the, this is the same app running on... Uh, let me make sure my mic's <laughs> on, too. This is the same app running on iOS, the same user interface, essentially. That's right. Right there, which is cool. Yeah, so that all same right. code we just wrote in XAML here in iOS. All right, so I'm going to type in. I'm going to go ahead and go first, and we'll put James in second. That's me. All right, so let's start the game. Ooh. This is the toughest one. This is contempt. So, contempt. James, this means look disgusted. I try. Oh. To... <laughs> All right. So when I, I tap on take photo, it says, uh, Brandon, take a oh disrespectful. There disrespectful. we go. Oh, it even take, tells you exactly. Take a what, selfie looking like disrespectful. disrespectful. Okay. All right. Let's see how let's see how it goes. Um, <laughs> there we go. That's a great picture to stream live on the internet. All right. So now it's analyzing my motion. Ooh. 41%. That's not bad. Not, not too bad. bad. All, All right, right, James, let's, let's see what you got. All right. <laughs> That's pretty good. I like that. Oh, yeah. All right. Whoa! Oh. 73%. <laughs> oh, man. Crushing it. And what we can do now is we can even see how James did so well. So I can tap on the results and I can look at his contempt score was 73, but check that out. It thought you were a little sad. Oh. Just a little sad. Yeah. I mean, I have no idea. Let's see what mine got. 
One percent. Pretty good. But no surprise. Happiness. Happiness. Yeah, <laughs> like apparently, that. apparently, that's my happy face. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll challenge you a little later. Maybe okay. if we have some time, we'll do a yeah. best two out of three. Yeah, I'm super interested to see how that all worked now. How did you build all that? So, boom, winner, just saying. All right, cool. Uh, all, right. <laughs> all right. Yeah, that's a great question. So, we, we mentioned that we're, we're using Microsoft Cognitive Services for this. Now, Microsoft Cognitive Services, if you haven't heard of these, is a incredible, incredible tool that Microsoft has in the cloud for you to use for free. And what it is is, all the decades of machine learning that really smart people, people smarter than me, put together that you can now download and add to your app. So things like we did here with emotion recognition, it can do facial detection, it can do, it can read text from a page and turn that into digital text. So let's, let's pull that up here. I actually have this tab open. So this is the Microsoft Cognitive Services website. You can just go to microsoft.com slash cognitive services to check it out. And if I click on APIs, you'll see all the different APIs that you can, you can play around with. And like I said, it's, it's all free to get started. So if I scroll down a little bit, we have some cool examples of how this works. How's Microsoft doing this, right? So this is an example of the emotion detection that we just were playing around with. So in this sample, it found multiple faces. That's something you can do in, in my app. We're just we're going head to head against each other, so we just need the one picture, but it can identify multiple faces in the photo and then bring back the results for each face. So it actually gives back what's called a confidence score. So if you remember in my app, it showed I got what a 41% for contempt. Uh, not as good as James. I'll, I'll, I'll catch up to him, I'll get there. But the confidence score is what Microsoft uses to determine your emotion. And so here, the confidence score on happiness, one. That means 100% confident that that face is happy. And so for example, if we switch over to one here, it's a child, child looks pretty surprised to me, but how does the computer know that? Well, the computer looks at it, Microsoft Cognitive Services determines, yeah, surprise, 90% confidence. You know, they're saying he looks a little happy, but yeah, I, I can see that little happiness in there but pretty cool. So highly, highly recommend everybody to come in and check out the Microsoft Cognitive Services. There's so many different tools and we could spend all day talking about them. Now, the real question I know everybody's wondering, you're thinking, wow, that was, that was an incredible app. That's probably the best app I've ever seen. And, and I agree, but where can you get it? Well, it's also on this website. So on the Cognitive Services website, if we go to documentation and support, we can click on SDKs and samples. So let's go ahead and do that. And here will be a list of samples, both from Microsoft and the developer community. So FaceOff was an app that I made. And so if we search for that here, it shows up there and gives you a little description, lets you know it is an iOS, Android, and universal Windows platform app created in Xamarin Forms, just like we've been talking about. And if you click on the link, it takes you right to my GitHub page. So there's a little picture of me. Check it out, download it, run it. There's just a little bit of setup involved. So make sure to scroll down to the README. And hey, there's me again. So in the README, there's a, this to-do section. You will have to grab a free API key from the Cognitive Services website. And then you have to add it to the code in this line here. Done, and then you're off and running. And then you can face off against your friends. So the other thing that we use in this app is the camera. And James did an awesome job earlier talking about using cameras cross-platform. So I actually used the Xamarin Media plugin, and let me show that here, because this is the same Xamarin plugins page that James was looking at earlier and showing to us. And what I used is this media plugin. So you can download them off NuGet to add to your project. In this case, I just want to show you the GitHub page. James Montemagno, looking great there. And in the README, just like you expect, here's all the platforms it supports and here's the API usage. And James even does a great job of giving some sample code that you can just add right into your app. So if we check out our app, let's go over to my, my picture view model. This is the business logic that helps set up the, that picture page where we were playing the face-off game. And I have a method in here 
Let's see, recognize. All right, so this method, get emotion results from media file. This is how we're using the emotion service client from Microsoft. So literally all I do is I create a new variable for my emotion client where I pass in my API key. Let's make this a little bigger here. And then all I do is this one line of code. I say recognize async and I pass in the photo that I get from the camera, send that off to Microsoft, and then it gives me back all the results. So I didn't have to do any of that. It was basically one line of code and now I can have emotion detection and facial recognition in my app. Incredible. And let's see, take photo async. Take, there we go. So here's another method we have, also in the view model, called get media file from camera. And this is using James plugin that we looked at a minute ago. And what this is doing is we're initializing the cross media plugin. We are making sure that the camera is available and that it can also take photos. That's important. Some users prefer not to allow certain permissions on their device. And then this one line of code here, take photo async. That's all I have to call. And then the plugin does the rest for me. It, it brings up the camera. When I say, when I push that camera button to take the picture, it takes my picture and returns that back. So I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to build out any custom views to load that camera interface. I didn't have to do anything special on iOS versus Android versus Windows. This just works. So with the Xamarin plugins, check them out because they are insanely powerful. And I always say, if, if you have an idea on how to do something, check the plugins first to see if maybe we already can help you do it because it can save you so many hours and maybe even weeks of development time. Like here, one line of code to take a photo instead of having to access all the native iOS, Android, and Windows APIs. Okay, uh, I saw we have a question from Tom that came in. How have you set up the custom bounce button? Great question, Tom. So before we jump into that, I also wanna show how we can create our UIs in C Sharp, and this will help make a little bit more sense for our custom bounce button that we've added. So the welcome page that we made today, that was done in XAML, but in Xamarin Forms, you can also create your UIs in C Sharp. So here's an example that we have of the score button stack. So this is score button one. This is the one that showed that I only got 40%, but that's okay, I'll, I'll, I'll win next time. <laughs> and so here, we create a new bounce button, just like we did in XAML, and then we set our bindings. So just like in XAML where we said set binding to say a certain property in our view model, we can do it here in C Sharp and add that to a stack layout. So also really easy. So if you're more comfortable with C Sharp and XAML, feel free to create your UIs in C Sharp. Now with the, with the custom bounce button, what I did was I have this views folder and I created a bounce button that extends the Xamarin Forms button class and all I do is I add a, a click handler to it. And this click handler, we scroll down just a little bit, takes advantage of those animations that we were talking about earlier in, in Xamarin Forms. So we mentioned that Xamarin Forms has all these native animations available to you that you can take advantage of. So when you tap, it makes sure that the button isn't already bouncing. That way the user can't just jam away at the button. I had some uh, uh, problems with that. But we run this on the main thread. So begin invoke on main thread, make sure that we run it on the UI thread, not in the background. Otherwise, anybody that's uh, done mobile app development will know your, your app will crash, you'll get, some, you'll get some errors. But basically I call bounce button dot scale two. Scale two is the animation that's built into Xamarin Forms that will scale the size of your control. So in this case, the button, I'm scaling up I think one Scale it up by 25%, that's what I'm doing. And then, so I scale it up and then scale it back down to its normal size. So I scale it up to the max size and then back down, let everybody know that the button animation's done and then we're good. And so now, anytime you create a new bounce button, it'll scale for you and give you that nice little bounce animation when it's tapped. The other thing you might notice is I have a, a style wired up to it as well. Styles, again, you can do it in XAML or you can do it in Xamarin, or you can do it in C Sharp. Xamarin Forms handles both. And here, if we jump over to my button style, 
I did this one in C Sharp, and I just identify a couple properties that I want all of my bounce buttons to have, right? I want all of my bounce buttons to be this specific hex color, and I wanted all of my bounce buttons to have white text. And this is a great thing to do in your app to make sure that all of your UI looks identical. And on top of that, if you wanted to change it later, like we were talking about um, redoing your UI to make it uh, look different, if we wanted to change all my buttons to a different color, well, I just have to do that here. And if I want to change that text, I do it here. And then every button is now, say, black with white text. Or we can change it to green. Doesn't matter. But yeah, great question. So let's see. We have just a couple minutes left. James, what do you say? Best, best two out of three? Let's do it. All, All right. right. All right, let's pull this up. OK. All so right. I'm going to reset this. It's going to give us Lovely a new, new emotion at the top, right? right? Just picture everybody taking screenshots. Posting fear. those on Twitter. Uh, fear. OK, take a selfie looking scared. I'm totally going to win this one. That's, that's a winner. That's a winner right there. I can, I can feel that one. Six ah. five. <laughs> 25. Oh. All right. We're, we're back one. up. Reset. Contempt do you want to? Let's do another one. Fear. Disgust. Sadness. Ooh, sadness. Yeah, I don't know. James, James, you're a pretty happy guy, so I think I might, I might get you on this one. Let's see. Okay. So, take a selfie looking sad. All right. Let's see what we get. Ah, 57. Oh, wow. Okay. Good, good, not great. Analyzing. Whoa. Eight. Oh man. <laughs> Face off champion. Pretty good. All now, right. Now that there is running on your <laughs> iPhone, but if you ran that on Android or on Windows, and they're all in the source code, which is really awesome. Exactly. So cool. All right. Well, thanks, James. So that's all for me. Stay tuned. Coming up next, we're going to have Adrian Hall come in and talk about Azure and how to use Azure with your mobile apps.